It's time we talk about the company, the growth stock that has come down, well, 25% or so since mid-October. I'm not going to waste your time. The company is called Uber. You probably know the company. You probably even use it, maybe even on a daily basis. Yes, we're going to try and make the bullish case for Uber. Of course, we'll present the bearish case as well. At the time of making this video, Uber is down 9.24% on the day. Why is that? Well, more robotaxi autonomous vehicle fears. So let's discuss all of that in this video. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So as always, quick overview of Uber right now. It has a market cap of $137.8 billion. Forward PE 19.7 times. Now, if you look at what the analysts are expecting this company to do in the coming fiscal years, we get sales growth of just above 15% each and every fiscal year, with fiscal year 2024 being above 17% year over year growth. EPS for fiscal 2024 will grow by 50.65%. Then in fiscal 2025, closer to 13%, and then we see a reacceleration in EPS growth by 2026 of 27.68%. If we look at the average analyst price target, that still sits 37.5% higher than the price we're at today. And then looking at some pricing metrics. So forward P we've seen 19.8 times compared to 53.6 times. That's the mean of the last two years or so, but we know that previously Uber was not profitable. So okay. Then we've got EV to EBITDA 17.5 times, price to sales 2.8 times, price to free cash flow 23.1 times, much lower than before. And right now, price earnings to growth at 0.48. So what exactly happened? Well, this. Waymo is coming to Miami with their newest fleet partner, Move. We're excited to announce that Waymo One will be expanding to Miami. While Miami is known for its sun and fun, the city is also emerging hub for innovation. Waymo's autonomous driving technology offers an opportunity to provide safer, more accessible all-electric mobility to Miami's residents and tourists. In early 2025, we'll begin reacquainting Waymo's all-electric Jaguar I-Paces to Miami streets through our new fleet partnership with Move, a global leader in innovative mobility solutions. We'll work to open our doors to riders in 2026, offering our ride-hailing service via the Waymo One app. Under the agreement, Move will manage and dispatch Waymo's fully autonomous fleet beginning with operations in Phoenix in 2025 and expanding into Miami in 2026. Waymo will continue to offer its service through the Waymo One app and remain responsible for validation and operation of its autonomous driving technology, the Waymo Driver. A couple of things here. So first up, we're talking about something that will happen in 2026. Second of all, the fleet partner, Move here. Move's growth has been fueled by its global Uber partnership and the support of leading investors, including Uber, who participated in its Series B funding in 2024. And last thing here, and that's basically the main issue of this announcement, it's that the service will only be available as of now only through Waymo One app. Previously, we've had Waymo announcements and partnership announcements with Uber, right? You can order Waymo through the Uber app. So this time they are not using Uber as of right now, which is probably why the market is a bit worried here. I mean, if Waymo can launch and maybe be successful without going through Uber's platform, why should they use Uber's platform, right? On the flip side, why did they partner with Uber for the other locations? where they are available. Is that not successful? Is that not going to be successful? What's the plan? Maybe they will announce a partnership with Uber closer to that launch date. Could happen. There's of course also the conversation about, well, the other players, right? Cruise, which by the way also partnered up with Uber, but then the big one is of course Tesla. Whenever FSD will be released into the wild unsupervised, that could also destroy a business like Uber, right? Could maybe even destroy a business like Waymo since Tesla's, well, there are already millions of vehicles on the road. It's just a software enablement unless you are on a very, very old hardware stack. So that might not work. But all in all, that's basically the fears right now with Uber is that 
when the autonomous vehicles will rise, let's say, will, will scale up and will be released into the wild, maybe Uber's business model will not be relevant anymore. On the bullish side, that's where I put myself in right now. I have no shares in Uber, but things are getting quite interesting right now. On the bullish side, you could say that, look, Uber is the perfect platform, the perfect distribution platform for all of these players, right? Because how many apps do you want on your phone? You want a Waymo app, a Cruise app, a Tesla app? No. Why not have all of those options on your Uber app right now, right? It's what you're using today. When you get an Uber, you, you can get a Tesla, you can get a Toyota, a Hyundai, a Mercedes, or whatnot. Imagine if each and every brand had their own Uber app. Wouldn't make any sense, right? Of course, the business with autonomous fleets and autonomous vehicles is a bit different. But when you have a platform like Uber available, why not? If you're a fleet operator, let's say, right? If you bought a huge fleet of Tesla vehicles, software enabled, it's self-driving. Why wouldn't you want to list those cars on the number one mobility app in your country and actually probably on the planet? Why wouldn't you do that, right? Just just won't make any sense. I might say, oh, but Tesla will have their own app. Okay, but again, I guess it's about distribution. And by the way, Uber already talked about autonomous vehicles a couple of times in the presentation, and I'll shortly play a clip from the CEO. So they did talk about autonomous vehicles that will significantly expand their total addressable market. They explain here why. One, Lower cost per mile on autonomous vehicles will lead to lower average fares. But you also have lower average fares in turn will lead to more consumers and higher engagements. So that's basically the flywheel that they are seeing here. Remember, Uber does not manufacture cars, so they don't have the cost of building the car. They also tell us leading EV companies are choosing Uber as the best autonomous platform partner to bring AVs to the market. When it comes to mobility, you've got Waymo, Motional, Aurora. You also have Cruise, by the way, for delivery. You have about the same. Then you have Surf, Surf Robotics. We've talked about that company in the past. And with Freight, you also have Aurora, Volvo, Torque Robotics, and Wabi. So yeah, they are, again, this is my bullish stance here with Uber. I can understand the bearish aspect of things here as well, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Remember, right now, we're only talking about way more Tesla, and this is just in the United States, in certain states. So the negative effects of all of it, especially if the bearish case does, let's say, turn out to be true, it will only be felt years and years from now. Unless, unless somehow Tesla, Waymo, they're all available in 50 states in the United States, in Europe, in other countries as well, and they completely, they completely eat Uber's business. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Do you consider Tesla a competitor? Well, they certainly could be, right? If they develop, it, it's exactly the same thing that you said, which is if they develop their own AV vehicle and they decide to go direct only through the Tesla app, they would be a competitor. Um, and if they decide to work with us, uh, then we would be a partner as well. And to some extent, again, both can be true. So I don't think it's going to be an either or. I think Elon's vision is pretty compelling, especially like you might have these uh, cyber shepherds or these these owners of these fleets, et cetera. Those owners, if they want to have maximum earnings on those fleets, will want to put those fleets on Uber. And so as of now, let's focus on Uber's business. If you look at Uber's business, Revenue-wise, has been growing quite nicely, still expected to grow nicely in the next coming fiscal years, as we've seen. Free cash flow-wise is now growing as well and growing quite quickly. If we zoom out a little bit and we look at, well, Uber before they became quite profitable and Uber today, I mean, look at this inflection point, Q2 2022 until today, huge growth in revenue and free cash flow and, of course, free cash flow margin expansion. Total trips since 2016 has gone up by close to 500%, growing 
gross bookings have gone up by close to 711%. And then all of that, all of that, you can see that the business has grown over the years, free cash flow negative to free cash flow positive. And what happens as well here? Well, SGNA as a percentage of revenue has come down. R&D as a percentage of revenue has come down. Stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue has come down. So this is a business that is growing and becoming more and more profitable. These were the results of last quarter. By the way, they also have a subscription called Uber One. Last quarter, they said here that they had 25 million Uber One members. So imagine that you can push autonomous vehicles, right? Something that 90 plus percent of the people have not experienced yet. You can push that to those members. Here, take some credits, try out Waymo, try out Cruise or Tesla or whatnot on the platform. The platform, the distribution to me is a big deal. Of course, they also have Uber Eats. They've got the advertising arm, which has generated already over a billion dollars in revenue. So yeah, quite a lot of strength. And here as well, they comment on the autonomous vehicle thing. And of course, we continue to advance our autonomous strategy, demonstrating how Uber can help unlock this exciting technology for the world. And so if we do a quick reverse DCF here, we plug in the free cash flow for the trading 12 months, terminal growth rate 4.2%, discount rate 8.24%. We see that the implied growth rate to justify today's price is 5.3%, meaning free cash flow has to grow by 5.3% for the next 10 years for this to make any sense. Now, if you look here at year nine, free cash flow sits at $9.5 billion, let's say. We've seen previously that in fiscal 2026, free cash flow should already be $9.75 billion. So yes, I think Uber today is quite undervalued. Of course, of course, you want some margin of safety, but I think that the growth rate that we've just seen, the implied growth rate already gives you quite a margin of safety. Now, if it's true that nobody partners up with Uber, if if autonomous vehicles globally take over, then yes, then they will have an issue. But until then, I think we have quite, quite a long journey ahead. Oh, there's also Uber Eats that we, that we forget, right? Uber Eats is quite a big deal for them as well. So yeah, I mean, right now, it's true that if you look at the, the stock, it's not... It's not the prettiest thing. It, it broke under the 200 day moving average. Yes, we did go lower here back August 50 at that Black Monday. So yeah, maybe looking for a rebound on that uptrend line here could be. But if you look, if you zoom out a little bit, you look at what happened before. This is a bearish diversion, right? We go higher, but RSI did not. So poof, a reversal. And now, of course, we went under that 200 day moving average because of that way more news. And by the way, which is a funny part, this is Google Alphabet. On the way more news, the stock is down. Make it make sense. And so to conclude, if you want to play the, let's say, contrarian trade here, I think Uber at these prices is quite attractive. Yes, there might be some risk in the long run, but in the short term, I just don't see how the business will suddenly decelerate and be destroyed. I just don't see that happening. Of course, we know the stock market is forward looking. So if in the future, let's say Cruise, Waymo, they announce new launches in 2026 or so, and they do not partner up with Uber, then yes, of course, sentiment will continue to be bad with Uber stock. That's the thing right now. Sentiment around the stock is bad while the company is doing quite well. So yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's very, very attractive. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I might push the buy button in the next coming days, but don't want to catch a falling knife, so let's maybe wait for a reversal. We'll see. Anyways, that's all I've got for you right now. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.